I'm Mrs. Maddox from Kids on the Land. Maybe you remember me from last year and, and I brought mom with me today. We are so sorry we can't be with you out on the land because of the COVID-19 virus. But since you can't come to us, we want to come to you through a video presentation. We at Kids on the Land have a mission, a job. We want you to connect to the place where you live. Why do we think that's important? Well, if you know about the place where you live and you begin to learn more and more about it, you'll want to sustain it and love it. And besides that, it's fun. We have uh, students from Albany. They live over in Shackelford County, and we have Woodson and Throckmorton's kids who come out to the land with us, and you live over in Throckmorton County. Well, today we're going to learn more about this land, its history from thousands of years ago. So get ready to get better acquainted with this place out here on the rolling plains. 70 million years ago, this area was covered by a shallow sea. There was no dry land. There were no rivers. 18,000 years ago, during the last ice age, the first rivers appeared. And as the weather grew warmer, the ice began to melt. And as the climate got warmer, the glaciers began to melt, and this provided the water for rivers to develop. It was during this time that the Brazos River would have developed. Winds blew soils, and the plains and prairies began to show up. 12,000 years ago, the first human footprints were on this land. They were the Paleo Indians. And if you had been nine or 10 years old, 12,000 years ago, you might have been living and live along the clear fork of the Brazos River. There was grass, water, trees, and valleys, food for animals, and protection for man. The clear fork of the Brazos River was a good place to camp. 2,000 years ago, you, your people probably would have, would have hunted mammoths like this one here. The Paleo Indians are going to have good food. A thousand years ago, the footprints of the Native American Indians appeared on this land. If you had been nine or 10 years old, a thousand years ago, your family would have been part of a small band of Indians who hunted the buffalo on foot with spears and bows and arrows. Your family would have camped along the clear fork of the Brazos, the river again, providing water, shelter, and food. 220 years ago, if you were a young nine or 10 year old child, especially a Comanche Indian child, you might have looked in amazement at the Spanish explorer, Pedro Villal, who visited this area. You would have been excited to see a man riding a horse, leaving hoofprints on the land. You would not have ever seen a horse, and but your people would learn to ride horses and become the rulers of the plains. These Spanish explorers called the river the Brazos de los Dios, the arms of God. The Brazos River is the longest river in Texas. 170 years ago, if you were this young Comanche Indian child, you would have seen some of the first white people who left their footprints on the land. Captain Randolph Marcy stopped at Paint Crossing after taking gold hunters to Santa Fe. Paint Crossing is on this land, this ranch, here, on the rolling plains. Then, five years later, the footprints of settlers were getting onto the Indian lands and there was trouble between the white settlers and the Indians. The Indians agree, agreed to settle on a certain area of land called a reservation. And if you were a young Indian child 155 years ago, 
you and your family would have been living on a Texas Indian reservation located on this ranch land near the Clear Fork of the Brazos River. The Texas legislature authorized the establishment of two Indian reservations. The Comanche Indian Reservation was established on the Clear Fork of the Brazos in Throckmorton County. The Brazos Indian Reservation for the Caddo's, Waco's, and other tribes was located 12 miles south of Fort Belknap, also on the Brazos River. This famous general of the Civil War, Robert E. Lee, was in charge of the reservation and tried to keep peace between the Indians and settlers. The Butterfield stage came across this land during those years. You can see the prints of the wheels on the Lamb's Head Ranch. A few years later, the white settlers found themselves under increased Indian attacks and Fort Griffin was established. If you were a white child, nine or ten years old during those years, you might have gone with your family to stay at Fort Gritton, Griffin when there was Indian trouble. A town called the Flat, or Hyde Town, grew up beside the fort. It was a supply point for buffalo hunters, soldiers, traders, and cowboys taking cattle on the western trails. You might have witnessed gunfights. It was a wild time. Five years later, 150 years ago, as the frontier moved westward, other courageous men came to study the plants, animals, and even to look for fossils. We call them naturalists. What is a naturalist? Well, that's someone who wants to study nature. And one of those was Jacob Boyle. He was a Swedish naturalist and an entomologist who became famous for his explorations here in Northwest Texas. Then settlers began to arrive. In the early days, no one dared settle the vast lands that stretched northwest of the Clear Fork of the Brazos River. Then settlers began to push back the frontier, and some of those settlers were the Matthews and Reynolds families. Their descendants still own the Lamb's Head Ranch. And that's a picture of the early headquarters. But 130 years ago, there were many changes to this land. The Indians were gone, the buffalo are gone, the Civil War is over, and the footprints of the cowboy and the hoofprints of the large cattle herds are on this land. The grasslands of the plains are just the place cowboys want to be with their cattle. The Matthews and Reynolds family had come to stay on what is now Lamb's Head Ranch, and that is the Stone Ranch House that has been restored today. Now families are building homes, small towns are growing, there are schools, and if you had been 14 or 15 years old 130 years ago, you might have gone on one of the cattle drives, taking cattle to market. The Goodnight Loving Trail comes across this land. The Great Western Trail came through this area. In 1874, seven million cattle held, headed up that Western Trail. Shackleford County was formed in 1874. Throckmorton County was organized in 1879, and Throckmorton, located near the center of the county, became the county seat. You can see those beautiful stone courthouses from those early days. Then, in 1881, if you were nine or 10 years, years old, you would have seen the railroad tracks make their ways across this land and arrive in Albany. And the railroad came to Throckmorton also. 120 years ago, in 1899, Watt Reynolds Matthew was born. Then 114 years ago, the small town of Woodson got its post office. 81 years ago, if you had been nine or 10 years old, you might have been in the first Griffin Fandang Fort Griffin Fandangle. The outdoor pageant traces the history of the footprints across this land and continues to this day. 78 years ago, three years, after that, 
Watt Matthews took over the leadership of the Lamb's Head Ranch. And if you've been eight or nine, ten years old, seventy eight years ago, your father might have been one of the cowboys who worked on the Lamb's Head Ranch. The goal for the Lamb's Head Ranch has always been to convert grass into beef cattle at a profit. Watt Matthews raised Hereford cattle. He was a steward of the land and the wildlife. In the first years after he came as the caretaker of the Lamb's Head, he worked with A.S. Jackson to preserve the Rio Grande turkey. Watt Matthews believed that you should know the place you came from, so he began restoring and rebuilding the many places where the footprints of the Matthews and Reynolds families had been. History is still very much alive on the Lamb's Head, owned to, to this day by the descendants of the original families. Today, you're watching the video of the lands of this historic, a video of the events of this historic land. The descendants of those early settlers continue the commitment to preserve the historic heritage and natural environment of this region. Now that you know more about the place where you live, we hope you will love it and want to take care of it. And we certainly hope to see you out on the land at a kid's on the land event when this pandemic is over. So thank you and stay safe and healthy. Fossils and history of what's happened before. This world is a space.